There are nine things I'm going to talk about today about fascia that will literally blow your mind. Now, I went through a lot of training on the body, anatomy, physiology. When we talked about fascia, it was this extra passive tissue, you know, like bubble wrap that just packs certain things. Fascia is the matrix or the material that surrounds every muscle in the body. Like, let me just give you an example. If we take this weight, for example, and I start lifting it like this, right? For about, I don't know, 20 times. I'm gonna get tired, right? I'm using a lot of energy when I'm doing this. Now, if we attach some fascial tissue to the weight, okay, and do that, I'm still lifting the weight, but I'm using a lot less energy because I'm using the free energy from the elastic band that gives you a lot of transfer of energy. It's running, jumping, etc. is not just about contraction and relaxation of muscles. It's about the loading of the tendons and ligaments and fascia and then releasing it. Fascia gives you your posture. I mean, you ever see people when they get older, like some people literally are looking straight down when they're walking, and that could have been totally prevented if they understood how to keep the fascia healthy and repair it, which I'm going to tell you at the end of this video. Fascia also gives you your body shape. Fascia also has similar properties to liquid crystals in those like digital TVs. It has these repeating patterns of similar type shapes that have the ability to change and adapt to the environment. The little cells that make fascia or collagen are called fibroblasts. And these little cells are like little spiders that can migrate. They can move through your body and you have billions of them all over the place. And they're basically laying down this, it's called ground substance to allow for lubrication and movement. And the next one is they're highly involved with the immune system. This is why our fascia can be sore, as in fibromyalgia and plantar fasciitis. And over time, that injury becomes an adhesion. So this is why uh, myofascial release and other techniques, the massage and trigger point therapy, are all really important, especially if you had injuries. Now, when you stop moving, the collagen is going to get sticky, it's going to get stiff, and the fascia is going to fuse together and stiffen. And when you start moving that tissue, it's not going to let you move. It's going to be very restricted. And maybe in your mind, you might think, oh, wow, I have a tight muscle. No, you don't. You have tight fascia. And fascia is also connected from head to toe. And so knowing this really helped me understand why certain techniques worked when I was in practice. For example, when people would come in and have injuries on their tailbone, I found the best relief I can give them is by working on the back of the neck, the occiput. Releasing the occiput seems to help tailbone injuries. Now, why would that work? Because of fascia. It's all connected. I'm basically taking this fascia and making it longer so there's more space. Another example would be people that had uh, problems with their shoulder. They couldn't elevate the shoulder. I would have them lay face down, and if they had a restriction on the left shoulder, I would work on the right calf and Achilles tendon. And that always seemed to open up the shoulder. Why is that? Because the fascia on the right lower part of your body is connected to the left shoulder. Another example would be people that had right shoulder pain through here. I would work on the gallbladder area. Now, in the past, I would talk about the phrenic nerve being involved, which is probably true. But I think also all the fascia that surround that phrenic nerve that go all the way up into the third cervical vertebra through here with all the different fascia attachments. So as I loosened this part up, it freed up this part. Fascia is extremely innervated by little tiny nerves that allows the body to know where it is in space. And this is why the fascia is very important for balance, coordination, and it has this amazing ability to be able to change its material properties. It can go from being very rigid to very elastic if you sit all day and don't move at all. The environmental message is don't adapt, just get tight and hold the person in that position. So you see this in the nursing homes a lot with people in this one position, like all day sitting, 
their body just grows like that. It's in communication with your environment, unless you get an injury. In other words, when you start walking or moving, now things have changed because we had that injury and now you're guarding a little bit on one side of your body. So the secret to restoring fascia has to do with adding dynamic motions from different directions. So it's not just the same motion over and over and over again. I remember in my 30s, the only exercise that I did, I mean, it was just biking over and over and over and over. My psoas muscles, which are the hip flexors, became so tight because I was doing that same motion over and over and over again. I'm going to put the videos that I'm personally doing down below, but there's many more that you can find. I want to give you the general principles of, of what to do. Another thing that I'm adding to this program is high doses of vitamin D3. I'm doing 50,000 I use every single day. If you're ever going to do a similar thing with vitamin D, you want to make sure you take the cofactors, vitamin K2 and magnesium and zinc and B6. And that way you can prevent any problems that may come up from taking high doses of vitamin D. And if you want more information about vitamin D and the cofactors, you should watch this video right here.